One of my favorite gospel songs is I'm Available to You. That song is sung by Milton Brunson and the Thompson Community Singers. I don't know how many of you have, are familiar with that song. I don't know how many of you remember that song. They don't play it on radio that much anymore. Uh, gospel music isn't quite the same uh, nowadays, but I tell you that it is one of the most beautiful gospel songs uh, that you will ever hear. It is a song that speaks to the desires that a believer ought to have. It speaks to the desires of being used by the Lord. It opens with the choir singing to God, saying, you gave me my hands to reach out to man. It says to show him your love and your perfect plan. God has a purpose for us. He wants to use us. The, the chorus, it eventually picks up with the choir singing, Lord, I'm available to you. It goes on to say, my will I give to you. I'll do what you say do. Use me. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way. Yeah, I tell you, it is a, a very beautiful gospel song that speaks to the desires of wanting to serve God. It speaks to the desires of, of wanting to be used by the Lord. And I tell you that the, the, the chorus of this song, it speaks volumes to the train of thought that, that we as believers ought to have today. Since getting my transplant, I have been able to kick back a little bit and I have been able to reflect over the last five years of my life. And I've been able to consider and think on how God has worked in me and how the Lord has worked through me, especially in those five years. And I tell y'all, I promise y'all this, I had no desires ever in my life to end up losing the function of my kidneys, nor did I ever have the desires in my life of having to undergo dialysis treatment uh, four times a week in those five years. But I also will tell y'all this as well. In those five years, God was still using me. I tell y'all that God was using me as a vessel for his higher plans. He was using me as a vessel for his higher purpose. And he was using me in a way that I again could never imagine. Our God is capable of using us in any kind of way that he sees fit. And so I am left wondering today about us, we who call ourselves Christians, we who would proudly tell anybody that we are a child of God. I am left wondering about us today. How many of us desires to actually be used by God? How many of us desires to be a vessel of the Lord today? You see, if we do desire to be a vessel of the Lord, we have to ask ourselves and be able to answer a question. A couple of questions we ought to be able to answer. First, are we willing to submit ourselves to the Lord? Are we willing to submit our will over to God? Secondly, is our storage empty? And what I mean by that is, are we available? Are we making ourselves available to be used by the Lord? In his letter to the Ephesians, Paul wrote about this. Paul said in the second chapter of Ephesians, he said, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for a reason for a purpose. Paul tells us that reason, he tells us that purpose. 
He says that the reason and the purpose that we are the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus is for the purpose of good works. That verse again says we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. I tell you today, I believe that God created all of us for a reason, for a purpose. He has a plan for all of us. And again, Paul states to us that that purpose is for good works. And I want you to understand today that the good works that Paul was speaking of there is the work of ministering to one another. And what I mean by ministering, I mean serving. We were created for the purpose of being of use to one another, believe it or not. We were created for the reason and the purpose of serving one another. If you do not believe me on that, scripture backs this up again with Peter speaking on this same thought. In 1 Peter, the fourth chapter of 1 Peter, you see Peter says, as each one has received a gift, Peter said, minister it to one another. In other words, serve one another. He said, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. This again points to the fact that we are meant to minister to one another. This is the reason, this is the, the purpose that God created us. And this is why he blesses us with his gifts. This is why he gives us his tools for the reason of being of use to one another. One thing I feel I must always say when it comes to the gifts that, that God gives us. One thing I, I feel I must always share with anybody that I speak to this on is that God, he has a great variety of gifts. There is a, a great diversity of gifts that come from the Lord. What I mean by this is that two may be preachers and two may be preaching about the Lord, two may be sharing message about the gospel, but both may likely teach uh, or preach very differently. They may have a different style about their preaching. Two may be singing. God may have given them the gift to sing, but again, they may not sing in the same manner, but they get the message of God across as well. What about cooking? You know, uh, two can be chefs, right? Two may be blessed with the gift of, of cooking. Andrew eyes just open wide open. He, he loved this because it's about food. <laughs> but both of them may cook or have a different dish that they specialize in cooking, right? There is a great diversity of gifts that God has poured out onto all of his children for the purpose of again of being of use of service to one another we ought to use the gift that god has blessed us with let us remember what paul wrote to the corinthians when he said there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit there are differences of ministries but the same lord and there are diversities of activities but it is the same god who works all in all but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all so i tell you today that God has poured out a great diversity of gifts on all of his children for his plan and for his purpose. All of us are just so blessed with a great variety of gifts that come together to serve those who are around us. Not only are we blessed with a great diversity of gifts from the Lord, God he uses a diversity of people. He uses a great diversity of people. What I mean by this is that God does not use one prototype when it comes to ministering, when it comes to serving each other. God uses quite many different people. All of us coming from different backgrounds. All of us have gone through different things. He uses all of us. For example, I want to refer to 
when the children of Israel was in bondage in Egypt and when God brought them out of that bondage in Egypt. The Lord, we know, used Moses. And Moses was a man that God used whose background, when you think about it, included him essentially being orphaned at birth so that he could be saved. We know that Moses was then raised by the people who had a tradition of worshiping and serving idol and false gods. Not only did they do that, but they enslaved other people as well. But I tell you that God never took his eyes off of Moses, even though that was in his background. And we also know that he killed a man as well. God, again, never took his eyes off of him. And God still used him as well. Within that same story, there's another person that the Lord used. And we very rarely think of, of God using this, per, this person. But again, scripture backs up the fact that God used this person. The other person in the story that God used was Pharaoh. Now, none of us would think that God would use Pharaoh. The reason why we wouldn't think that God used Pharaoh, because again, he served idol gods. Again, he was a man that was responsible for the enslavement of others. He was not a good person. That's what we would say. But scripture again shows us that he did in fact use Pharaoh. We'll see that God was very active in his use of Pharaoh in hardening, in hardening his heart over and over and over again within that story. Why was God using Pharaoh? Somebody would say, preacher, what do you mean that God was using Pharaoh is what somebody will ask. Again, scripture says, that the Lord declared of Pharaoh, for this purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. I declare to you today that God very much still desires and still uses man woman as well. When I say man, I'm talking about all of mankind. And again, he uses many different people of many different ages as well. God still uses man for the work of persuading others to trust in and to believe in and to have faith in him. He uses man to show someone else the way the way of Jesus Christ so that somebody else can be saved from sin, can be saved from the devil, can be saved from living in this world. I want you to know today that the Lord has a divine assignment for all of us. Do you believe that? God has a divine assignment for you today. He has a, design, a, a divine assignment for all of those who are fit and all of those who are ready for his special plans and for his special purpose. The question is, are you fit? Are you ready to be used by the Lord? Are you fit and are you ready to be used by God? Are you fit and are you ready to be used for his special plans? Are you fit and are you ready to be used for his special purposes? Again, I ask you today, do you desire to be used by God? Do you desire to be a vessel of the Lord today? Again, I tell you that God can use anybody according to his purpose. In the example of Moses and Pharaoh, I want you to understand, I believe that there were, or there is an example of two different types of vessel. There are two different types of vessels shown in that scripture that God can use in this world today. Again, I want to direct your attention to 
the two verses that are my key verses for my sermon today. Again, in 2 Timothy, the second chapter, the 20th and the 21st verse, we see Paul, right? He says, but in a great house, Paul says, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. He says, some for honor and some for dishonor. Underline that. Highlight that in your Bible today. Again, he says, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. He says, some for honor, some for dishonor. He says, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor. Again, underline that vessel for honor in your Bible today. It says, sanctified and useful for who? The master. The master, the master being who? God. Prepared for every good work is what Paul wrote there. Now, notice there in that scripture that Paul first mentions a great house. I want you to understand when he's talking about that great house there in that verse, that Paul was picturing the church building being that great house. And we'll see him then say in that verse, he says that in that great house, he says there are all kinds of vessels in that great house. If you think about the church building, and if you think about what's inside of the church, there certainly are all kinds of vessels, right? I'm standing here at the pulpit. There's a table. There are chairs that you all are sitting in. And then when we have communion, we use a, uh, we use a couple of trays and there are cups that be in those trays, right? There are all kinds of vessels that, that are inside the church building. And of course, our building is not as, as fancy as other church buildings. They certainly have uh, beautiful windows, right? Those, those painted windows that they have. Church buildings are, are filled with all kinds of gold and silver, but not only gold and silver, but wooden pews, right? Wooden tables as well. Again, I, I want to point out here to you today that Paul sets two different categories for the vessels that are in that great house. He states that those vessels are either vessels of honor or they are vessels of dishonor. Those two words stand out, don't they? Honor and, and dishonor. I feel, like, I feel like we need to break those two words down here because we may define those two words differently in our minds today. So I wanna set the definition for you when it comes to honor and when it comes to, to dishonor. The word honor means to be of high value. It means to be of great esteem and great respect. So if we try to apply those words to the vessels that are within that, that great house, these vessels that are in the great house that are vessels of honor, they are very unique. They are very special. And they are typically used for special reasons. They are typically used for special purposes. They are the vessels of honor. Then we have this word dishonor here. The word dishonor means to lose honor, to lose value, to lose reputation, to lose prestige. And again, if we apply that word to the vessels in that great house that Paul was speaking of there, those vessels are drastically different from the vessels of honor, aren't they? 
they don't have any value. And if they don't have any value, that means that they aren't special. In other words, if they aren't special, they aren't used for a special purpose. They are very common, in other words, if you will there. Just because the vessel is not used for a special reason, just because the vessel is not used for a special purpose, that common vessel, that vessel that is of dishonor, it still gets used. It actually still gets used in that great house. And I tell you, I find it fascinating that Paul used gold, silver, wood, and clay for an example of two different types of vessels. We would right away consider the gold and silver to be the vessels of honor, wouldn't we? And we would consider that the, the vessels of wood and clay uh, will be the vessels of dishonor. They are lower in value, right? Yeah, I tell you today that I'm reminded of how Jesus used those stone water pots, those lowly stone water pots in the wedding that took place at Cana. He used those stone water pots for the purpose of turning water into wine. From those lowly water pots, Scripture tells us again that something far superior came out of those vessels, which we would consider to be vessels of dishonor. Again, when God uses somebody, something good is going to come from it, regardless of if they are a vessel of honor or a vessel of dishonor. But for us, we desire today to be a vessel of dishonor. We, we want to, to serve our Lord. We want to serve our God for his higher plans for his higher purposes. In other words, we want the Lord to use us today for his special plans, for his special purposes. How many of you had parents or grandparents that had a China cabinet? How many of you had parents or grandparents that had a china cabinet that was filled with all kind of fine china? I, I, yeah, Andrew raising his hand, I can raise my hand a, as well. Uh, our grandmother was one of those people that had a, a china cabinet that had all kind of, of fine china in it. And, and I had to verify, make sure about this with mom. And, and I'm pretty sure Andrew can back me up on this as well. Me and Andrew didn't really get to use that china. We we didn't get to, 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 to eat off that china. That, that was for the grown folks. And we didn't use that china uh, regularly, okay? We, 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 we used that china for special days, for, for the holidays. That china, we would say, was a, a vessel of honor, right? It was, it was special, it was, it was unique, if you will. And I tell you, I believe, and I'm absolutely certain about this, that in our own homes today, all of us have the same type of vessels as well. We have uh, dishes, we have plates and, and other things that uh, we'll break out and use on special occasions. And then we have paper plates and we have all kind of little cups. They aren't really special. They don't hold much value. They are very common, if you will. And you know, after we finish using those paper plates, we don't think much of them. We just throw them away. We just throw them in the trash, don't we? Again, we want to be special today. We desire to be a vessel of God today. So all that has been illustrated here, there is a spiritual a thought behind all of it. Notice in the second of my key verses today, uh, until we are in 2 Timothy, the second chapter of 2 Timothy, and I believe my key verses are the 20th and the 21st verse. Paul says in the second of my key verses there today, he says, if one desires to be a vessel of honor, Paul says, then he or she should cleanse himself or herself from the latter, 
the latter being referenced in the first of my key verses, the latter being the vessels of dishonor. Again, I believe that all of us, all of us have a desire to be used by God. In other words, all of us have a desire to be a vessel of God today. I believe that all of us as the children of God, all of us should desire to be used by the Lord. Again, when I say vessel here, I want you to understand that I mean, I believe we should all desire to be used by God according to his plan, his purpose for his use. If you so desire to be a vessel of the Lord, there are a few things that we must do. By our default nature, our nature of sin, we are or we were all vessels of dishonor. In other words, we were all vessels that had something that was in common. That something that was in common to every man, to every woman, to every boy and to every girl is sin. All of us were sinners. All of us were sinners. As Isaiah said, when he spoke about our nature, when he spoke about mankind's nature, Isaiah said, when it comes right down to it, Isaiah said that we are all like filthy rags. In other words, we are all a mess, if you will. We are all a, a filthy mess. Now, Imagine desiring, wanting God to use you, but you are a filthy rag. You are a mess. Imagine God using a filthy rag for his plans and for his purposes. Do you really believe that God is going to use a filthy vessel for his higher plans? for his higher purposes. Do you, do you really believe that, that God will use a filthy vessel for his special plans and for his special purposes? I will repeat again, asking you today that question. All of you have said, uh-oh. That, that universal answer for nope, no way not going to happen. You see, we would not use a filthy rag to wash ourselves, would we? We, we? we would not use a filthy rag to clean our dishes. We, we, we would not eat from a filthy plate. We would not drink from a filthy cup. It could be gold, it could be silver. If it is dirty, we are not going to use it, are we? Amen. So in order for God to use us, what do you believe should happen? We, 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 we must first be spiritually cleansed, right? Mm -hmm. we, we, we must first be spiritually cleansed of our filthy mess. Mm -hmm. we, we must be cleansed of our sin so that we can no longer be what is common to our world. Mm -hmm. Again, we desire to be used by God. So if we desire to be used by God, we're desiring to be special ourselves. Mm -hmm. we, we don't want to be what is common in our world today. And again, what is common to all of us in our world today is our nature of sin. We don't want any part of that. We want God to use us. We, we want to be special. So in order for us to separate ourselves from that which is coming, we must be sanctified. And the only way that you and I can be sanctified today is by the blood of who? Jesus. Jesus. In order for us to be separated from that which is coming in our world today, we must be sanctified by the blood of Jesus. 
Paul again said there in our key verses today, he said, if anyone cleanses himself, he says, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, the latter being that vessel of dishonor, mm -hmm. he says, he will be a vessel for what? Honor. A vessel for honor, sanctified, mm -hmm. separated from and useful for the master, useful for the Lord, useful for God. Paul said, prepare for every good work. Mm -hmm. One who cleanses himself from being a vessel of dishonor has now made himself useful to God for God's use. Do you see that there today? Amen. If God is going to use us, if God is going to use anybody for the purpose of doing his work, for the purpose of, of doing the good work, doing something that is, is special in our world, he's going to use a, a vessel that is sanctified. He's going to use a, a sanctified vessel. He's not going to use a, a dirty, he's not going to use a filthy vessel. Now, when we have cleansed ourselves from being a vessel of dishonor, when we have, in other words, become sanctified by the blood of Jesus, I tell you, we have only taken our first step in truly becoming a vessel of God. Mm -hmm. I believe that there is another step that we must take that I want to share with you here today. The next step, I tell you, I feel that it is of equal importance that that we must take in order to be used by the Lord. In order for us to be a vessel of God, I want you to know that we must be open. We must be open to the Lord. Mm -hmm. We must be available to God. We, we, we must make ourselves available to the Lord. Amen. We must make ourselves available to be a vessel used by the Lord. So somebody's going to say, well, preacher, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by I must be available? I must make myself available. I must make myself open to the Lord. What do you mean by this? A lot of times, even though we have turned to the Lord, even though we have turned to God, a lot of times, some of us are a bit reluctant. We are a bit reluctant to make ourselves available to God for him to use. And well, what do I mean by that? Well, James, he said in his fourth chapter, he said that we ought to submit to the Lord. How many of us have submitted to God today? Peter, he wrote in his letter, his first letter, Peter said that we should humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. How many of us have humbled ourselves under the mighty hand of God? We typically consider that we would submit or humble ourselves before the Lord only when it comes to receiving his blessings, only when it comes to receiving his favor. If we want the blessing from God, we know how to humble ourselves right quick, don't we? We'll, 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 we'll humble ourselves and we'll plead, we'll beg, we'll pray hard. Saying that we come to you, God, as humbly, as lowly as I can, seeking his grace, seeking his favor, seeking his love, seeking his mercy, right? Yet I tell you that we also have to submit ourselves. We have to submit our will for God's will. Mm -hmm. If we desire for him, if we desire for the Lord to use us today, we have to submit our will, our own will for God's will. If we truly desire to be used by God, if we truly desire to be a vessel of his, how many of you are willing to submit your will for God's will today in order for God to use you? 
You see, this submission, it proves difficult for many people. It proves difficult for many who have professed to believe or to have faith in God. Somebody's going to say, well, why is that? Well, I would say, you know, I would get kind of smart. I'll say, well, you would know. But I have an answer for you today. As I said in my sermon last week, if you happen to listen to that sermon or if you happen to read that sermon, the general idea is that we all have our own plans. We, we all have our very own desires. And, and many of us, we are reluctant to give up our plans. We are reluctant to give up our desires. We are reluctant again to give up our will because we have things that we desire to accomplish. Mm -hmm. We have our own will. We have our own dreams and we want to accomplish. We want to do all of the things that that we desire. And, and many of us, we begin to believe, well, if I submit my will to God's will, I won't be able to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I is a very dangerous word, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If you truly desire to be a vessel of God, I tell you today again, you must be open to him. Mm -hmm. You have to submit to him. You have to be willing to give up your own will for his will. You have to be open to where God is going to take you. You have to be open to how God is going to use you. Many of us are reluctant to do so. But God, his, his plans are far higher than our plans. His purposes are far higher than our purposes, higher than our dreams, higher than our goals, higher than our will. I tell you today that there is no higher calling. There is no higher purpose that we can serve today than that of being used by God. How many of you believe that today? Amen. Amen. There is no higher calling or purpose that we can serve to than that of being used by God for his plans and for his purpose. To be a vessel of honor that is used for the special purposes of God. To be a vessel of honor. Like, really think about that for a moment. To be a vessel that is used for his special plans, for his special purposes. What could be better than that? What could truly be better than being used by the Lord? I truly believe that the Lord has a divine plan. I truly believe that the Lord has a divine purpose. I truly believe that God has a divine assignment to all of those who are open to being used as a vessel of his. But we must make ourselves open to being used as a vessel of his. When I say that he has a plan, when I say that he has a purpose, for all of those who are open to being used by him. Again, I want you to understand here today that I do not just mean the preacher. See, a lot of times when we start thinking of vessels of honor and when we start thinking of vessels of dishonor, we'll raise the preacher up above everybody. But God, again, is using all of his children, not just a select group of his children. Did you hear me there today? He's not just going to use the preacher. He's going to use the whole entire congregation of the church. Some of us don't believe that, that God can use us. Imagine that, limiting the power of who God can use, limiting the power of what God can do. Some of us don't believe that the Lord can use us. But again, I tell you today that God can and that God will use anybody as a vessel according to his purpose. 
If you've been following along in the Sunday school lessons recently, we saw where God used Gideon to lead Israel when Gideon thought himself to be nothing. Gideon didn't think that he was worthy. He thought he was just too lowly to be used by God. But God said, think again, I'm going to use you as a vessel of mine. Gideon was a vessel of honor. David, I love calling on David because David was nothing. David was, was absolute nothing. He was nothing but a scrawny like me. He was a scrawny shepherd boy. I'm not a shepherd boy, but I'm scrawny. I got David with that as well. But, but God saw something in David. God took a look at his heart and said, that, that's my vessel of honor and I'm going to use him. Y'all know there's another one that I like to use, Peter. Come here, Peter, for a moment. Peter was brash. He was loud. He was bold. And, and, and many of the people that was living back then around the disciples, they viewed the disciples as being unintelligent. They didn't think that the disciples were smart. They didn't think that the disciples were, were capable of being ministers of the Lord. But God took a peek. He looked at their heart. Mm -hmm. And, and when God looked in those men's hearts, he again saw that they were a vessel of honor and that he would use them for his higher plans, that he would use them for his special purposes. Mm -hmm. Our goal as a child of God is to always make ourselves available to the Lord for God to use us for his special plans, for God to use us at, for his special purposes. It does not matter if you are a man or a woman. It does not matter if you are a boy or a girl. God can and God God will use you. It does not matter if you are young. It does not matter if you are old. God can and God will use you. Make yourselves available to God today. Make yourselves open to God today for his special plans, for his special purposes, so that God can use you in a special way today. I tell you today, submit your will for the Lord's will. Submit your will for the Lord's will so that you can be that vessel of honor for declaring his name in our world today. His name needs to be declared in our world today. Make yourselves available to be that vessel of honor for declaring his name and for persuading others and for showing them the way. Showing them the way of trusting in, believing in, having faith in Christ Jesus, who would then lead them to the heavenly kingdom. Make yourselves available to be used as a vessel of honor in our world today. You see, when we are reluctant to be used by the Lord, we are no different than one of those china dishes that's in grandma's china cabinet that don't ever get used. Some of them got used, but not all of them got used. When, when we are reluctant to be used by God, even though we have been sanctified, we are no different than those dishes. We look nice. We look nice spiritually, but we're just sitting there. We're just sitting there doing nothing. We're just sitting there not being used. So I say to you today, let us be used. Let us be used by God. Let us make ourselves available to the Lord for his use. Let us live for the higher calling. Let us live for the higher purpose of the Lord. Let us become that vessel of honor that is available and that is open to God for his plans and for his purpose. Amen. 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 Amen.